This is worksheet two of the polyatomic packet. And this is really, in many ways, a continuation of worksheet one. We're going to practice naming polyatomic compounds when given the formula, and also the opposite in the second table on this worksheet uh, when given the name writing the formula. So you need to use the chart of polyatomic compounds that's on worksheet one and also on the back of any periodic table that you might have. Uh, we're not expecting you to memorize these polyatomic ions. If you happen to memorize some of the common ones, it might make your life a little bit easier because you won't have to flip to the chart as often. <clears throat> so, there's a couple examples up at the top. When you're naming compounds, all you're going to do is figure out which is your single element, so in this case, barium, and which is your polyatomic ion, so in this case, everything that's in parentheses. Right, so when the polyatomic ion is in parentheses, it's usually pretty easy to find, and then all you have to do is go look up, for example, C2H3O2 on your chart and find that it's named acetate. Similarly, here, right, you've got aluminum, okay, and then let's look up this thing that's in parentheses, ClO3, it's chlorate. Now, a little note, you want to be very careful with the chlorite, chlorate, all that stuff. If you look on your chart, you'll see in the anion minus one charge column, uh, ClO is called hypochlorite. It's got a minus one charge. ClO2, also minus one charge, is called chlorite. ClO3 with a minus one charge, that's one we see here is chlorate, and ClO4 with a minus one charge is called perchlorate. So just a little word of wisdom, be careful with the ClO, ClO2, ClO3, ClO4. The names are all very similar, uh, and it makes a difference which one you have. Okay, if we look at the first example, um, you'll notice that in this compound, we have calcium, and then we have this CO3, this carbonate, and there's only one of them, and so we don't necessarily have parentheses. All right? You can put them there, but on your worksheet, there's no parentheses. So how would you have known that that was the polyatomic ion? Here's my hint to you. With the exception, okay, so my rule won't work if your compound starts with NH4. Okay, you should probably just memorize that NH4 is the one positively charged polyatomic ion. So if a compound starts with NH4, well, that's your polyatomic ion right there. All right, but with the exception of compounds that start with NH4, the first capital letter is always going to be part of a single element, the thing that you just name by looking at your periodic table. Okay. The second and third capital letters, those are part of the polyatomic ion. So that's what you have to go look up on your chart. Okay, so let's use this rule to look at our other example. All right, in this compound, my first capital letter, that's part of my first element. So for my capital letter on through until I get to my next capital letter, that's my single element that I find on the periodic table, that's cesium. My other capital letters, so the S and the O, right, and everything in between them, that's a polyatomic ion. That's what I have to go look up on the chart and sure enough find that it's called silicate. All right? Okay. Moving on to the next chart. Going the opposite direction, right? Here what you're going to do is unless the compound starts with ammonium. Okay, so this one we'll get to in a moment. That'll be our little exception to the rule. Unless it starts with ammonium, the first part of your name is always the name of a single element. So you'd go look that up on the periodic table. For example, magnesium is in the second family on the periodic table. It's got a plus two charge. Hydroxide, that's your polyatomic ion. Right? So you look that up on your list of polyatomic ions. It says the formula is OH, and it's got a minus one charge. So just like we did on worksheet one, you're going to swap and drop. This one comes down, so there's one magnesium, and the two comes down, 
So there are two OHs. And whenever we bring a number down to attach to a polyatomic, we put the polyatomic in parentheses. Okay? There's a big difference between MgOH with parentheses and MgOH without parentheses. What this is telling us with the parentheses is that we've got magnesium and we've got two OHs. And that works because magnesium has a plus two charge and each OH has a minus one charge and so it adds up to be an overall charge of zero, a neutral compound like compounds should be. If we had not put parentheses, that would have been saying that we had a compound where we had magnesium, we had one oxygen, because the two wouldn't apply to the oxygen if there weren't parentheses, and we'd have two hydrogens, because that two would just be attached to the hydrogens. Well, magnesium has a plus two charge, oxygen has a minus two, and hydrogen each has a plus one. So that wouldn't work out at all because our overall charge would be plus two. This would not be neutral, so that would never form as a compound. I know the parentheses here seem little, but they're significant. We can't forget them. All right. Uh, so I told you we'd look at ammonium phosphate. Here we need to remember that ammonium is a polyatomic ion. That would be a good one to memorize. So NH4 has a plus one charge. And phosphate we'll look at. It's got that A-T-E ending that indicates it's a polyatomic, and if we look it up, sure enough, PO4 with a minus 3 charge. So we swap and drop. We've got three NH4s, and we've got just one PO4. And that's our formula. Okay? Uh, one last thing, and then I'll let you go. Okay? Down at the bottom this third table here, the first thing you're going to do is just name it. So it's the same as what you were doing in the first table. Right? Here's your sodium, and then everything else must be part of the polyatomic. You look up HSO4, and it's called bisulfate in your table. And then we're going to count up by adding the subscripts, kind of like we did in the ionic compounds packet, how many total atoms we have. Okay? So we've got one sodium, one hydrogen, one sulfur, one, 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 and four oxygens. So four, five, six, seven. Okay? Now, you got to be very careful on other ones. Some of these get tricky. Sometimes it helps to draw a picture. Let's look at this one here. All right? This is telling us that you've got two of these NH four polyatomics. So you've got an NH4 that's made of a nitrogen and four hydrogens. You've got another NH4 made of a nitrogen and four hydrogens. And then you've got a CO3. Yeah? So you've got one nitrogen, four hydrogens, another nitrogen, another four hydrogens, one carbon, and three oxygens. So one plus four is five, Another 1 plus 4, so we got a total of 10, 11, 12, 13. Add that up, you get 14. I'll let you name it, okay? But you got to be very careful to think about your subscripts and think about what you got going on, and sometimes drawing a picture helps, okay? All right, so when you get to class, we will practice this more.